This is Macro Voices with hedge fund manager Eric Townsend, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Serezna. Let's move on to this week's post-game chart book, which is titled Rolling Bubbles. So as we roll into the Rolling Bubbles chart deck, page two shows the FANG Plus Index futures. Wow, looks like secular inflation to me. Well, you know, it's interesting because that was the one Julian Brigden was talking about uh, as we go into this whole idea of how much impact, let's say, lower yields have had and and have driven all of this. But it's interesting because our good friend uh, Kevin Muir, all the way back in 2014 and again in 2017, was writing a whole series of articles talking about this idea of rolling bubbles and when inflation comes that it would create a sequence of bubbles that would roll one into another. And I just wanted to take a two of what's been hot and how far they have gone and really put context into this and really reflect on how these things could really play out. Nonetheless, uh, it all really started with the fangs and, and it was the place where so much uh, performance uh, existed even uh, prior to the post-coronavirus period. But it was really since March that we saw this extraordinary several hundred percent run in the FANGS Plus index. It's FANGS Plus because it also includes stocks like Tesla and NVIDIA and other ones like that. But really, this index has just been on fire. It didn't even stop there. A, A similar time, that social media basket uh, after the coronavirus bottom back in March of 2020 also went on a run of several hundred percent and really seems to now almost be reaching a parabolic state on the upside as it's just turning higher. And so it's, it's amazing to see that uh, where all of this money is channeling and focusing all of this energy to the upside, right? Moving on to page four, where I put on ARC, and really the reason I chose Kathy Wood's ARC ETF is because uh, the bubble really then rolled into the EV space. And while I didn't want to go and cherry pick individual stocks, including Tesla in this basket, because ARC owns a very large exposure to that whole EV story, it really kind of shows how that money flow came right into this this kind of basket and really drove this big accelerated move that has just uh, has not quit on the upside, right? Well, it really is an amazing story. And I I think ARC is a particularly good place to look because Kathy Wood, to my mind, really personally epitomizes this new mentality on Wall Street, which clearly is working. And I, I certainly don't mean to be down on Kathy. She's making lots of money for Her clients and, uh, you know, congratulations, Kathy, if you're listening, your performance has been phenomenal. But if you listen to what she says, if you watch her in interviews, you know, she kind of rolls her eyes and says, oh, boy, these these old school guys that think profits and revenue and that stuff are important don't get it. We're in a new paradigm. It's a new investment paradigm. A company like Tesla is going to be delivering these electric vehicles as a service. And it's a new paradigm. And the fact that It's really clear to any business person who looks at it that they're not going to make money making these electric cars. Kathy is dismissive of that and says it's not important. Well, as much as old school guys like myself might be inclined to roll our eyes and think, boy, Kathy, you don't think profits and and revenues are important? You know, come on. Well, look at her performance. She is very much in tune with this storytelling paradigm that is allowing a story like Tesla that has never shown a profit and shows, as far as I can see, no sign of ever showing a profit to continue to be one of the most profitable investments in the stock market. So, you know, folks who think like Kathy, which, you know, she doesn't think like I do, that's for sure, but it's working. (laughs) It's working for them. They're making lots of money at it. Well, you know, Eric, I'll push back on you a little bit on that because, like, it's, if you think back to even uh, 1999, 2000, during the rise, everyone looked like a rock star that was pushing the internet stocks on the upside. I mean, I don't think we've really seen how the whole story plays out. I mean, uh, just identifying it during the rise 
I, I just think that we just have to see in the end how it goes through uh, the downturn cycle to really uh, already be patting people on the back. But one way or another, you're right. She has uh, truly caught the right wave, and there's no denying that. What's interesting on page five is I wanted to— Well, hang on, because I, yeah. I, I want to make sure that we're clear. I couldn't agree with you more, Patrick. Where she is is we're in 1999, and just like there were people in Internet stocks then saying, look, it's a new paradigm. Profits and, and, and revenues and all that stuff are not important. It's a new paradigm because the Internet's going to change the world, and you want to be part of the story and stop worrying about profits and all that stuff. Kathy Wood is the current day equivalent of that. Now, so far, she is on an incredible wave and she's turned in some incredible performance. Is it all going to blow up in her face just like it did in 2000 for the Internet folks? I think it will. But hey, I could be wrong. Right. So uh, what I wanted to, though, show on page five is how that EV push has really spilled into the entire global auto index. And so uh, the Cars ETF, which uh, owns all the major auto companies around the world, has also just caught on fire. And largely because obviously many of these companies are also moving into that EV space. And also this index now has a very large weighting into Tesla. But, uh, but certainly, I mean, up a couple hundred percent off the March lows, just being in the auto basket has had the same type of impact. Absolutely. And again, I think this is a sign of this shift toward secular inflation. Hard goods like automobiles are going to be in demand. We are going to see a, a change toward government emphasis on eliminating fossil fuel burning vehicles and moving to electric vehicles. That's going to create new demand. And uh, it, it's going to sell lots and lots of electric cars in coming years. So I don't think it's any surprise that you're seeing this kind of price action uh, across the board. I think automotive is going to be a very, very busy place in coming years. So uh, what I wanted to now go on to page six, where we want to talk about the new entrants to the bubble, the ones that are just joining the party uh, at the tail end. Obviously, the most recent one was the idea of squeezing shorts and, uh, and this idea that uh, nailing the most shorted stocks is where the money is. And it's interesting because I just chose GameStop here because I don't have an index to really touch on there. But it seems like even though GameStop has fizzled out, this game... Uh, has just started. Oh, with come the, on. It's going to 600. I read it on Wall Street. <laughs> but, it, but what we're seeing is, is that there's now a very big attention to the most shorted stocks. And there continues to be buzz about what's the next GameStop. And it really now is, is something that uh, has uh, captured the imagination of speculators to be able to, to continue to find these types of stocks and securities that have this uh, tailwind behind them on, on cornering shorts that have gotten a little too uh, comfortable in their position positions, right? Anyway, Eric, so I wanted to touch on the Bitcoin story, but not so much the Bitcoin itself, but now the stocks that are buying Bitcoin. And particularly, obviously, there's Riot and a few of these other ones, but I really wanted to touch on MicroStrategy, the MSTR. And what's interesting is, is that this stock and the, and the CEO came in with this idea that they're embracing this new Bitcoin technology. And they started to turn around and accumulate very large amount of Bitcoins in this publicly traded company. And a lot of the players out there that couldn't access the Bitcoin markets suddenly saw stocks like MSTR as opportunities to get exposure to crypto without actually having to buy the coins directly. And and what's amazing is that now we're seeing a bubble within a bubble because whether you think Bitcoin is a bubble, what we're now seeing is these stocks that are buying Bitcoin have actually just gone completely parabolic. On this chart on page seven, I have Bitcoin with the, uh, with the white line and that micro strategy in the orange. We have now seen a complete decoupling as people are now in this bubble phase outright chasing these stocks and to, to kind of really show how crazy that has gotten on page eight. What I have is a chart of the market cap of MSTR over the net asset value of the Bitcoin it owns. And so right now you are paying a ridiculous premium over net asset value of the coins to be participating in this through a stock like MSTR. And so the, it's, it's amazing to see how these different bubbles just keep rolling and finding new places to create these huge excesses on the upside. Well, Patrick, just to clarify, 
I think Bitcoin is a bubble, but I think it's a bubble that maybe is just beginning to get blown. It might have a whole lot bigger to go. And certainly, as I said in the market wrap, with Elon Musk now helping to drive the story higher, nobody can drive a story like Elon. How much farther can these things go, Patrick? I have absolutely no idea. I do admit that there have been times when I look at some of these charts like this in terms of the premium being paid here, and I think to myself, what are these guys smoking that they're paying this? Well, let's move on to page nine. <laughs> I think they're also buying the pot stocks too. Whatever they're smoking, they're investing in that too. Well, that's the rolling bubble just then moved on to these uh, cannabis stocks. And what's interesting is obviously one of the tailwinds was the uh, blue sweep in the political front that really kind of gave this uh, some real momentum behind it. But we're suddenly seeing several hundred percent on the upside of uh, anything to do with cannabis. And so, so the question really is, is that where is the next crazy spot that this is going? This, this rolling bubbles is just I heard Cheech and Chong are going to launch a, a hedge fund. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Seriously. And uh, and so that's it, it, it's probably going to be a SPAC, though. Uh, and uh, <laughs> let it, anyway, so the the um, it, it's really interesting to see that it's almost like what we're seeing is that the Internet has created this congregation where these speculators can now pool and on an instant notice get what is the next hot thing. And everyone is, trips over themselves rapidly to get a piece of the action as, as something goes. I don't think this is over in terms of rolling bubble. I don't know whether the existing bubbles on a lot of these will continue, but it almost seems like they're going to find something new to take to the moon and just go to the next one. And so it'll be really interesting to see where we can spot where the next really crazy breakout occurs. But one thing that I do want to highlight going to page 10 is something we had on a chart a month ago where I looked back to 1999, the 1998 to 2000 period, kind of showed how the NASDAQ created this monstrous outperformance relative to the S&P and the Russell. And really what I think I wanted to take away with this is that it really shows what, what's happening, right? So I'm going to show in a second the chart of the S&P 500, and it's been trending higher, and even the Russell's been participating. But really, just like those internet boom tech stocks ran in uh, 1999, it really decoupled from the broad market, right? Like when, you're, when you actually are dealing with companies that have earnings and real fundamentals, no one gives a shit about those stocks anymore. And they're simply not participating. And uh, you know, you, if you own a basket of consumer staple stocks or communication stocks, it's just not, not happening. And you have to be almost chasing the momentum of, the, of where the, the herd is concentrating all their attention to get a piece of the action. And that really uh, is something that uh, exemplifies this market. And it really echoes and mirrors and, uh, that analog from that 1999 period, right? Absolutely. Well, how far into the 1999-2000 uh, story are we, Patrick? Because uh, there's a big difference between 1999 and 2000 in terms of how things turned out. Right. I mean, well, back then I was just showing how that index went 300% back then, and we're only a cu up a couple hundred percent off the, uh, the March low. So there is no denying that these bubbles can get even bigger. It's a very premature to already be saying that it's over, but it'll be really interesting to see whether we have rotation in the bubbles. Like maybe some of these bubbles, like the EV bubble, may already start correcting. You know, it really does feel like Tesla is bumping its head. I'm not forecasting that, but I'm just saying, what if we see a scenario where, where like the EV space starts to correct, but the market finds a new place to pour into a bubble and it's just a rotation driving up different parts of the marketplace in this concentrated way. Anyway, what I wanted to touch on on, on page 11 with the S&P 500 is just that slow crawl that the broad market has. There is no big parabolic rises or, you know, these big, huge percentage gains. The S&P is sort of just a, a silent participant in the f and, and slight benefactor of the fact that everyone is just uh, no reason to sell this market at this moment and just crawling higher, uh, always banging its head on the next kind of gamma overhead resistance level, call walls, and other things. But it really is a scenario where an index investor who owns a participation of the S&P 500 has uh, almost been left behind when you see how some of these other little pockets within the markets are running. And it really kind of shows just how the froth of this market uh, is, is playing out. 
I personally don't think it ends well. I think you agree with that, but it's just really, I guess the, the big question is how long can it last and how far can it go? Because there is no evidence that, uh, that it's ending today or tomorrow, right? Well, Patrick, I think the big question is what can you do to trade this? Because I think we agree it's going higher first before it goes a whole lot lower. But guess what? It might go a whole, whole, whole lot higher before it goes a whole, whole lot lower. So what do you do in order to not, I certainly wouldn't dare to short the market here. Uh, On the other hand, I don't really want to be exposed to the long side because I think at some point there is a big reversal. Maybe we should do a whole postgame segment at some point going back and reviewing some of the strategies like the calendared straddle that you use at Big Picture Trading and what the ways are that you can play this. Because I think that we are probably in 1998 or 1999. Market's going to continue to melt up much, much, much higher until everything blows up and it all goes down suddenly and takes everybody by surprise. I have no idea when that's going to be, and I don't dare trade either side of this directionally unless it's in a very carefully hedged way. So we should probably look at strategies like that in coming weeks. Oh, for sure. We can circle to that. What I do want to leave this post game with is a, a, another interesting chart that uh, was brought to my attention by Kevin. It's the micro index. And what this index is, is it takes the Russell 2000 and only looks at the bottom 1000 stocks within there, plus the thousand stocks that are waiting to come into that index. So it's really looking at that smaller component of the market. And what's amazing is that this entire space has also been running. I mean, we have seen almost 100% rise in those micro stocks. And so it's, you know, when we hear a lot of those people talk about the fact that indexing is taking all the money, clearly uh, there are spaces and pockets within this market that uh, that are getting a lot of momentum behind them uh, uh, at the tail end. And that continues to show just the froth within the markets. You mentioned our good friend, Kevin Muir. I just want to let our listeners know, in your Research Roundup email, you'll find a link to an article by Kevin explaining inflation break-evens and how they work. It's a measure of inflation expectations in the marketplace. If you're not already familiar with the theory of inflation break-evens, I highly recommend that article because it's very much going to be timely and relevant. Meanwhile, you can get a free trial membership to Patrick's service, Big Picture Trading, where he does chart books like this almost every day the week, four days a week at bigpicturetrading.com. There's more information on page 13. That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from bigpicturetrading.com the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. Please register your free account at MacroVoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly Research Roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the Internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at macrovoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. 
For more information, visit macrovoices.com.